It was a rainy spring day on March 28, 1885 at 3 o'clock in the afternoon when a wonderful gift was presented to the city of Evansville by Willard Carpenter. Originally, his dream was to get back to the community by building a college. However, his focus shifted to constructing a library after friends convinced him that his endowment would not sufficiently support a college. The library he built would be radically different from other libraries at the time. It would be the first public library in Evansville, a library free from race and gender, an enduring gift from one man to his community that would become a lasting legacy for history and knowledge. Well, Willard Library was opened in 1885, and it was built um, by Willard Carpenter, who was a local industrialist in Evansville. He built Willard Library as a gift for Evansville. It was a free public library, which was really progressive at the time. Uh, most libraries were like uh, gentlemen's clubs where the elite males would go and read and smoke their cigars, and they weren't really lending libraries. Willard was be built to be a lending library, and it was built to be open to everyone. When Carpenter shifted from building a college to a library, he turned to prominent Evansville architects James and Merritt Reed to design the building. The Reed brothers would later go on to design and build the elaborate Del Coronado Hotel in San Diego in 1888. Willard Library is an architectural masterpiece of the Victorian Gothic style. It includes stained glass windows with portraits of Carpenter and famous authors. The original tile floors and chandeliers, as well as much of the ornate woodwork, remain today. Work on the library started in 1877, and it opened eight years later. In the early years of construction, many in Evansville questioned whether the project would be completed. Because of the falling prices, the value of his endowment, which was made up mostly of land, had shrunk from $400,000 in 1876 to $266,000 in 1880. The library trustees chose to wait for prices to rebound rather than selling the devalued land. When work resumed on the project, Willard Carpenter was a hands-on philanthropist. He was involved in the daily construction at the site. His brother, A.B. Carpenter, testified that Willard watched every brick that went into the library and that he did as much work as any laboring man. What made his involvement even more remarkable was that he was in his late 70s at the time. Shortly before his death in November of 1883, he was still visiting the site and giving impromptu tours to friends and visitors. The trustees worked to preserve Carpenter's dream by managing the trust to operate the library. From 1885 through the early 1900s, there were no substantial changes made. During this time, Willard Library continued to serve the community as its collection grew steadily. In 1942, the first major change was made to the library when Gray Davis, the head librarian, made the decision to install a children's room in the basement to serve younger patrons. Later, in 1977, the children's room was remodeled to become what it is today. In 1972, after the release of Alex Haley's Roots, a massive genealogical collection was gathered. This brought about the idea of forming a group devoted strictly to genealogical affairs. In 1977, the Tri-State Genealogical Society was established. Then he invited them to be here, and there is an agreement between the library and the Tri-State Genealogical Society for them to hold their meetings here and also to house their materials. Eventually, the first Tri-State packet was issued. The packet was created to assist those interested in finding their roots. The current library is divided into three distinctive sections. Today, the basement of the library is the children's area. The first floor of the building plays host to the standard collections such as novels, magazines, and DVDs. The second floor offers a less traditional collection. It is a treasure trove of historic resources. Many people visit Willard to use its broad genealogy collection to trace their heritage. It is ranked among the most extensive genealogical collections in the state of Indiana. I can say that we have uh, genealogy information from all 50 states. Um, we're probably the third best genealogy collection in the state of Indiana. Moreover, the collection encompasses marriage, divorce, birth, death, 
and church attendance records from local counties. The collection also contains newspapers recorded on microfilm dating back to the early 19th century. Others take advantage of their local collections such as fire maps, preservation files, photographs, high school yearbooks, and a compilation of literary works by authors from Evansville. I, I think Willard, Ly well, Willard to me uh, is about um, probably the, the, the true expre truest expression of what a public library can be. Uh, it's open to everybody, it's always been open to everybody, and I think public libraries in general are some of our most democratic institutions. And there aren't a whole lot of other uh, uh, agencies that are within the government or uh, kind of with the government that so many people love. I mean, this is, you know, if you, if you think about it, um, everybody could come here. Um, our, our hours are, are, you know, much more expansive than a lot of other uh, government offices that you can go to. And we're, we're literally open to everybody.